Hello and welcome to Get All Access, the show that brings you closer to the world of research. We understand that finding reliable information can be challenging, especially when access to research papers is limited. How often have we stumbled upon just the right research paper and stare at a page which says limited access only, restricted, get access. But fear not, because that's exactly what we are here to solve. Our goal is to bridge the gap between research and general public by providing a jargon-free delivery of the latest research findings. We want to make research accessible and understandable to everyone, regardless of their access to academic journals. So whether you are a student, a researcher, or just someone who is curious about the world of research, this show is for you. I'm joined by two distinguished academicians with whom I was privileged to work on a research paper published in the Journal of Broadcasting and Electronic Media. The paper is titled The News Ecosystem in the Age of AI, Evidence from the UAE. Let me introduce Professor Norita Ahmed, Director, Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning at American University of Sharjah and Professor of MIS. Thank you, Norita, for joining me for this episode. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. We are also joined by Muhammad Ibahirin, who is a professor of mass communication at the American University of Sharjah. He has published widely on digital technologies, human behavior and culture, as well as innovation and entrepreneurship. Thank you so much, Muhammad, for joining me to discuss the research paper in more detail. Thank you very much for this invitation. It's an honor to be in this get all access and i think access is key to success let's begin with the first segment of get all access where i go to each one of you on the whys what motivated you to take part in this research study first let me go to muhammad yes my my personal motivation is just to explore new topics and to have this intellectual restless to start thinking and investigating topics that are relevant to our society because research uh, doesn't happen in a vacuum. We are part of our societies and we would like to uh, share our knowledge with our communities and society at large. Thank you. Thank you, Muhammad. How about you, Norita? What was your motivation? Thank you again, Sabir. So one of the biggest motivation for me as educator is that we will always have to face challenges along the way. So we really have to find a way to make sure that whatever it is that we do, um, we will embrace technology because technology will always be part of our life. So I have done quite a lot of research in the field of AI itself. So I thought it's going to be very interesting with, you know, during my communication and conversation with my colleague and also students in terms of the challenges that they're facing right now with a lot of automation with the use of AI. So people, students especially, are very worried in terms of what the future is going to look like when it comes to to job, to work, the nature of work itself. So I think it's, it's very, very important for us as educators to try to explore this topic and to see exactly how can we embrace technology in our daily life and to make sure that we are not going to be frustrated in the future and know exactly what to do. So that's my main or biggest motivation in doing this project. Thank you. Next segment is all about research design. A research design is paramount to the validity of a research paper. And I would like to go to Muhammad to know all about the research design of this paper. Muhammad, take us through it, please. Yes. So as you said, I agree with you, this conversation are very important because the trigger in us the curiosity is to start exploring these new topics and AI and uh, artificial intelligence automations are are topics, timely topics that are very interesting for us as educators, as scholars to start investigating understanding and explaining providing explanations to ourselves and also to, to our communities so what we did we we started with the theoretical framework. To, to our theoretical framework was the AI-driven algorithmization, and then we started the conceptualization of our paper from this from this framework, and then we started co- collecting the data 
And then by collecting the data, we conducted about eight or 10, I think 10 uh, qualitative interviews with professionals who are working in the United Arab Emirates because the United Arab Emirates was our case study. So we conducted interviews with journalists from news organizations, from print media, from broadcast media, and also from digital media. So we covered all the branches of the, of the media. After the collection of the data, we used the software Atlas TI to help us in the coding and then to submerge, to identify the sub-themes, the themes, and the me-themes. So that's so far for our, our theoretical framework and our method. Thank you, Mohammed. Now we move towards the most exciting segment of the show, a segment we call Quotable Quotes. I now go to each one of our researcher of the study to provide one of their quotable quotes from the findings of the study. So if you are a researcher watching this segment, you can pick up one of the quotes and cite it in your paper. And that's where we disrupt the norm. I must tell you, in the show notes, you will find the full citation. If you want to cite this paper, I, I will also provide the email address of each author. If you have any specific questions, please do so. Definitely, I guess one of the, the most important thing that, that people need to know about the paper is that this one thing, at least for me. So my quotable quote is, one of the key ingredients to the success of AI in journalism is the mindset and culture of innovation. Yes. So the findings, actually the findings in this, in this papers in this paper are, are two. The, the first one is the, that news organizations lagging in, in digitalization are also behind when it comes to AI adoption. And, this, and the second finding is related to the first one in the sense that news organizations that think that AI is just an extension of digitalization, these news organizations, they will face serious challenges in adopting AI. Let me complete my, my contribution by, by highlighting the implication. One of the most implication is that educational models of journalism must be updated to accommodate AI technologies. Having worked in the UAE media industry for a number of years, I understand the uniqueness of the UAE's newspaper industry and how it sources most of the content through syndication. UA media is heavily dependent on the syndicated media content, so the news is very US-centric, and the content market is highly monopolized. One of the participants who has corporate communication background and considerable experience of working in a variety of publications in the UAE says the key challenge faced by journalists in the UAE is the architecture of the information flow. As already covered by Muhammad, the findings of the study suggest that UAE is adopting AI, AI rapidly and thus has created an AI ecosystem that accelerates innovation. But the news organizations are yet to benefit from these efforts. They are still experimenting with AI at a slow pace. The insights from the interviews also shows growing interest in leveraging AI to optimize the business models and news operations. And once that happens, then we can, then we can see some positive change in the UAE's media industry. Now, before we end the show, let me quickly go to each one of you to know more about your latest research projects and so that we can figure out when you can join me again at Get All Access. Norita, you first. Definitely, yeah, this is something that is very, very interesting, I guess. So I just, I just want to share a little bit. I published a paper that came out in IEEE Computer on the future of data scientists. And this is very, very timely in a sense because we talk about generative AI in that article. So I wrote that back in October before this whole phenomena of chat GPT. So that, that is very, very interesting to me. Yeah. Oh chat so, GPT is just in the news every single day. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm writing a paper about the implications of a chat GPT on education. So I'm working with a group of colleagues from the US, from the UK as well. So we, we are looking at the impact of ChatGPT 
specifically in education in terms of what is out there that that we as educators have to do and to understand further and what are some of the limitations of chat gpt as well so i'm really looking forward to to our paper i know that the, the progress of chat gpt is cheers out of this world in a sense every every single minute we hear something new yeah i am i am all i am working with, uh, with uh, of course with norita so we are working on a paper about education for also a timely topic sustainable development it's a kind of paper that explains the the framework for how we embed education for sustainable development in curriculum design so technology is timely but also sustainability is a topic that is relevant to, to our societies so i think this paper is also very interesting because we are we are adopting a transdisciplinary approach so we are more than 10 10 scholars and practitioners because when we use the concept of transdisciplinarity we include all the stakeholders as ac- uh, acad- ac- people from academia and also practi- practi- professionals so to generate a knowledge that provide an impactful solution to our problems thank you both for joining me in get all access can't wait to get you back to discuss your next publication. Thank you. There you are. We just disrupted the get all access mechanism. Head to the show notes to cite the research paper. And now you have the access. Please like and share this episode if you feel your colleagues will benefit from the research topic we discussed. Subscribe to the show and continue getting all access.